Welcome to this free immigration help channel and today I am doing another one of those uh, visa extension frequently asked questions videos. I have done already one of those uh, so I guess I am doing a volume two today and the reason why I'm doing it be is because I got so I didn't expect to get so many questions. I'm getting probably a good 30 questions every single day. Um, so I wanted to kind of make it easier for you guys. If you have questions, you can check out. I already done one of these uh, frequently asked questions videos. And obviously I've done the video specifically detailing how to fill out the I-539, the uh, application for the extensions, uh, for the extension or change of non-immigrant status. But in your case, obviously it's going to be extension because that's what... Uh, most of you guys are interested in these days especially because understandably because of the virus a lot of flights are canceled um, you know a lot of flights are delayed so that's definitely understandable okay not gonna waste any more time let's get straight into it frequently asked questions regarding the extension of stay okay question let's go is there a fee waiver now I get a lot this question and there is indeed a fee waiver specifically for uh, the form I-539, the extension of stay. Um, and the form that you're interested in, the waiver, is I-912, Request for Fee Waiver. And this particular form, I have it open right here. It's the instructions for the Request of Fee Waiver. It applies to a lot of different forms, not just I-539, but I-539 is one of them. So, to answer your question, yes, there is a fee waiver for the form I-539, the $370 plus the $85 biometric fee. There is a fee waiver. However, it is very, very narrow, very specific. Uh, you have to be full into this INA Section 245I appli or applicant with E2 Commonwealth of the Northern Marina Islands just just a lot of different things that is very narrow and not a lot of people unfortunately fall under there is no specific regulation or legislation out there yet that helps you know people that had to stay in the United States longer than they planned they their tickets got canceled their tickets got delayed because of this whole virus situation unfortunately I I, I personally wish to see something that's done because uh, understandably so it's not you know most of these extensions are not uh, you know not by your own doing right you didn't you didn't want to do that you didn't want to stay longer and you you now have to do this extension to remain legally in the country because of this unexpected unprecedented situation uh, unfortunately however there is not a waiver specifically because of this whole pandemic of this whole virus unfortunately uh so here's what i'm here's what i say uh, what i say when, when when it comes to this question regarding the the fee waiver you can try to send uh, a written statement and this form, this fee waiver, I-912, with your application and say in the written statement that obviously you came here, you had a certain amount of money, maybe you didn't have any kind of financial support from any relatives here in the United States, and you stayed here for two months, that was your plan, all your money spent for the two months, right, and you had to go home you plan to go home but your plans got canceled because of this whole pandemic unprecedented situation so now obviously because you don't have a financial support or any kind of income because you're non-immigrant in the united states of america you need this fees waived because fees are pretty substantial 370 dollars plus 85 dollars that's more than 400 dollars so you can try but but keep in mind you do need to file your I-539 at least one month before you, uh, you know, before your stay here expires. 
And with this, if you do file I-912 with it, you definitely have to expect delays in your processing because there is now the whole additional application that they will be processing on top of your i-539 so if time is of the essence if it's very urgent i don't recommend doing this whole fee waiver but if you do have you know two three months maybe time remaining for your stay you can try give it a shot Okay, let's move on to the next question. Hopefully, I was able to answer this one. If you still have additional questions, don't hesitate. It's not a problem at all. Don't hesitate. Drop the comments below in this video and I'll be happy to answer. Okay, next question. What is the maximum request can I apply for extension? Can I apply for six months? Yes, you can definitely apply for six months. You can apply for two years. You know, <laughs> it doesn't really it doesn't mean that you will get two years extension. In fact, most of the times your extension of stay is for six months. And uh, if you notice, probably whenever you enter the country, if you if you have came to the United States more than once, uh, you probably notice that usually they give you the duration of stay when you enter the country for six months, most of the times. And that's usually the extension of stay as well they give it for six months now they it, don't take my word for it they can give you less than six months they can give you three months two months one month it's really it really depends on the circumstances it really depends on a lot of different factors but most of the times it is six months so yes you can definitely request for six months and uh you can really request for as much as you want but most of the times you'll get six months keep that in mind and also one thing that I wanted to mention here is make sure your request is uh, goes along with the written statement that you're providing right so in the written statement you're describing the reasons why you're asking for this extension of stay so let's say with this current pandemic situation right a lot of you guys cannot go back uh, your flights are delayed flights are canceled right so for you to ask for six months extension definitely 100% makes sense because that's you at least expect you know at least probably another two three months for all the international flights to start coming back to normal and then another three months for you to book new tickets and stuff like that prepare travel all of those sort of things so definitely makes sense uh, but with the you know if, if it doesn't make sense with the written statement then just try to go along with the written statement okay that's what i'm trying to say let's go to the next question what is the rate of chances of being approved for applying for an extension great question it's very hard to answer it because it really depends on a lot of factors uh i personally personally from my experience uh have not seen ever the extension being denied um but most of the times again those reasons that you know i've seen people file for you know all of that sort of stuff there was always a good reason and right now i think most of you guys have a very very good reason because you really cannot go back on time because of the flights being delayed and canceled so there's definitely a good reason so as long as there is a good reason behind your request you should be fine you shouldn't really worry about you know your application not being um, approved okay let's move on to the next question do I still have to attach other proof of finances that I can sustain my stay here for the remainder of my extension like an affidavit of support or return ticket very good question um, there is a sp special page for this and uh, I will show it to you right now where is it aha it's right here I'm gonna I'm gonna put this page in the description of this video check it out what is your specific uh, category right what visa do you have what kind of non-immigrant visa do you have so let's say this question comes from a person who has a b1 b2 visa right you know the traveler for business or for pleasure um, and they're filing the I-539 extension of stay. What do they need? Here we go. Click on this. A written statement. So to answer this question, if it's B1, B2 person, then nope, you don't need no financial statements, nothing. Just a written statement. Make sure in the written statement to describe exactly why you're requesting the extension of stay. Uh, in, a, in 
decent detail you know if you had tickets already return tickets and if they have been canceled make sure to describe all of that put all of the information in there the dates the flight numbers all of that sort of stuff but it's all in the written statement you don't need to actually uh, attach any kind of documents to the application now it, it don't 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 get me wrong it doesn't mean that USAS will not request any kind of evidence from you later they might they might I've seen where they say no we don't need anything just written statement you send the application and then they send you a request for additional evidence it happens it happens so if you do have some additional documents keep them on hand so that you are ready to send them just in case but but as as of the requirements b1 b2 you don't need however for example for let's say a j1 exchange visitor you do need to provide a ds 2019 certificate of eligibility for extend exchange visitor status so for everyone kind of a different thing you see for f1 reinstatement is a little bit different for f1 academic student is a little bit different so whatever category you're in just go through this list and find your category check it out make sure that you know you're 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 providing exactly what is needed okay so let's move on to the next question uh does the application require biometric data after filing i-539 extension stay of b1 b2 visa application and does applicant need to attend appointment for biometric submission at application center for that okay very very good question and i've got a few already regarding this particular the biometrics uh so here's the thing what i wanted to show you whenever it comes to uh, whenever it comes here's the instru instructions whenever it comes to the filing fee right and let me find the filing fee here filing fee in the instructions the filing fee says that it is three hundred and seventy dollars uh, for the application and there is also eighty five dollars for the biometric fee so since there is that eighty five dollar biometric fee that you have to pay I can tell you 99% sure that there will be a biometric appointment involved again 99% sure doesn't mean 100% so you never know your application might just be approved and that's it without any biometrics although I don't know why you're paying $85 if there will be but because there is an $85 biometric fee involved most likely you will have that biometric appointment and you will get that notification that tells you that you that schedules you for the biometric appointment where you go to uh, an application service center and you do your fingerprint you do your picture and basically that's just uh, for the background check that USAS uh, are doing before approving your application so most likely yes yes you will have that biometrics appointment okay let's move on to the next one how to apply for extension for j1 exchange visitor okay good question basically you are following exactly the application process as i have described in the very first video that i've done where i actually go through this form right here the application for exchange uh, extend change non-immigrant status it's i-539 this one is paper application however you can do it online and i recommend doing it online because it's it speeds up the process much much more so the very first video that I've done uh, probably a couple of weeks ago check it it's on this channel um, follow it the filling out the application all of the details right you know selecting your categories and all stuff like that and then you will go back to this checklist of requirements initial evidence for form I-539 let's see J1 exchange visitor Oh, you already clicked on that yes so this is DS 2019 certificate of eligibility for exchange visitor status so you will have to fill out this on top of this application right here okay so hopefully that answers your question let's get into the next one my parents are under B2 visa and I-94 will expire on July 20th do they have to apply separate or just use I-539 and i-539 a so they will only have one payment of 370 excellent question now i got a lot of questions regarding this i-539 a basically what i-539 a is is the same exact form as i-539 
only it applies to people who are filing the, there's basically more than one applicant right so like in this case for example two parents right uh, one is applying and then and another one is also applying both they had the same maybe you know visa till the same time you know july 20th in this case both of their visa expires july 20 both of them need the extension so they can both file together and the i-539a will be the part of application to the i-539 the main one hopefully they make sense now regarding the payment according to the instructions you only pay for the i-539 you don't pay for the i-539a so that means that most likely you will only have one payment of $370 for I-539 and that's it for both parents. Now, it really depends and that's why I highly recommend filling up these forms online because you're when, whenever you're filling up these forms online, it tells you exactly how much money you owe. How it works is you create your USAS account, you go there, you find the right application, you fill it out and then you basically click submit it doesn't really submit it but it is in all submitted saved form ready to go to USAS after you make the payment so you fill out all the applications and then it shows you how much you owe in order for these applications to go through you make a payment they go through and there is no really confusion how much you need to pay so that's why if you can fill up online do it because it will just save you a lot of questions and a lot of confusion uh, let's go to the next one can you have them waive those fees due to COVID many people are out of work and can't afford it definitely 100% understand this and like I said in the beginning whenever I was talking about the fee waiver uh, it's definitely understandable and I personally wish to see USAS do something about it because you know it's it definitely makes sense it's, it's an un unprecedented situation however there is no way to have them waive fees due to COVID-19 directly because there is no regulation or uh, or a supplement to current you know fee schedule that they have uh, regarding these extensions based on COVID-19 unfortunately now like I said in the beginning you can try filing this fee waiver if you have some extra time and see maybe USS will consider but I personally think it's a very very slim chance because there are specific specific categories that only are eligible to receiving this fee waiver unfortunately guys unfortunately I hope I wish I could I, I could give you a different a little bit of a different a little bit of better uh, response to this one okay let's move on to the next question I received a receipt from USAS but there's still no update for my case is it okay to stay here in US while waiting for their confirmation okay that's very very good question very good question very tough question because it's uh, it can put someone in a very bad position if I say that yes you can definitely stay so I'm not gonna say yes you can definitely stay I will say that if you can go back home uh, without waiting for this extension and without staying over your you know the date that you had your status here definitely do it definitely go back home and don't wait for this extension just to be on the safe side don't take unnecessary risks because even though i personally have not seen these applications being denied and i don't think that a lot of them will be denied in you know during this time because there are good reasons for people to extending them however there is still a chance that you will be denied and if you are denied and you have overstayed that's it you really messed up your status and you just might not ever be able to get a visa because you overstayed and it's it's very it's it, it's a very serious thing that we don't want to do however however if you don't have another option if you just cannot go back obviously you don't have another choice then well you really don't have choice so you just have to wait and see 
and hope that it will be approved. You don't have a choice to go back home. However, if you do, don't take risks. You know, if, you buy, if you've been watching this channel so far, um, I always try to give you guys a solution with e either no risk at all involved or as minimal as possible risk because that's just the way I look at things. I don't want you guys taking unnecessary risks. Okay, let's get into the next one. My parents came to USA in different dates, in one month's difference. Can I apply for B2 visa extension for both in one form? Okay, great question. Uh, very similar to the one we already had. You can't apply for both of them in one form, but you can have that I-539A in addition to the I-539. So it's kind of a one application package, but still it's two different forms. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. Next, next one. What do you mean by duration of status in B1, B2 visa? Very, very good question. I kind of answered it in the previous video, pre previous frequently asked questions, but uh, it's very important. And I've seen a lot of people having confusion with it. And it's so imperative that you don't have confusion with it. Okay, so let me start from the very, very beginning. Let's say you go, you know, you want to visit the United States of America for the very first time. You go to the embassy and you get a B1, B2 traveler visitor visa, right? You know, the regular visa that you get sticker in your passport. You now have it, right? Uh, you buy your flight. Let's say you're, you got it. Let's say you got it today. And it's May, June 8, 2020. And you have it until June 8, 2021 so you have it for one year for one year you buy the ticket tomorrow and you fly on let's say june 15th 2020 to united states of america you come here you go through the airport you talk to the immigration officer in the airport and they give you another little visa kind of thing before it used to be a white piece of paper uh, that was clipped to one of your passport pages that said exactly how long you can stay in the United States of America. And most of the times it is for six months. Sometimes it's for three months, sometimes it's for one year. I've seen people getting it for two weeks. Really weird cases, but it happens. But most of the times it is for six months. So if you came on in uh, June 15th, 2020, for six months, what is it? July, August, September, October, November, December. So you can stay till December 15th, 2020. Okay, six months stay, if I'm counting correctly. Sorry if I'm not, my math is not too good. So, what, I, what I'm trying to explain here, you are not looking at the visa that you got in the embassy that says, oh, you have to, you can stay here till, uh, uh, you know, next year. June 8, 2021. That's not what you're looking at. That's not the date that you're looking at. That date, that date does not mean that you can stay in the United States of America till June 8, 2021. That date means that you can enter the United States of America anytime until June 8, 2021. That is why it's called the entry visa. Now, whenever you come here, you get the duration of status. That status, how long you can stay in the United States of America. And it's called, referred to I-94. And that is what you have to look at whenever you're planning to apply for your extension of stay. You look at your duration of status. So let's say if you have another three months, you can stay here in the United States. That's fine. You don't really have to worry about. You still have some time to see maybe, you know, all of these flights, international flights are going to be fixed, right? Going to be back up, running and normal. But if you only have, let's say, you know, a month left, then you probably want to apply for the extension of stay just in case. So because people, uh, because immigration services, custom borders uh, patrol, they, they no longer put this white piece of paper into your passport. A lot of people don't know how long they can stay. So if you want to find out your current duration of stay, you can go here to this website. I'm going to put the, this link in the description below of this video. This is official government website. It's called i94.cbp.dhs.gov. And here you will be able to find 
your i-94 and see your duration of status until how long you can stay here in the united states of america very simple okay hopefully that answers the question let's move on to the next one and the very last one could i use my account to file application online for my daughter or i should create a new account for her to file application could we submit the two applications at the same time great question and uh the last time i used the immigration online account to file applications that's exactly what i did um it wasn't for me but i was helping a friend of mine to fill up the applications uh and we did three or four applications from his account from his immigration account so you the last time we did it it was probably about a year ago it was still possible to do so most likely yes you are able to do it uh all you basically are doing is you're creating the new application you're filling out with you know your own details bam application done saved right and then you have another application started and you fill it out with your daughter's in this case details and then you save it bam now you have two applications pending now in order for you to submit them you just basically you know pay the fees and, and you're all done and of course in this case for your daughter definitely make sure you fill out the i-539a that is a part of your existing application i-539 that you're going to be doing so hopefully i was able to answer these questions uh if i you know if you still have any kind of additional questions definitely drop them in the comments below i will be happy to answer them i wanted to say that because youtube did, did some changes to the studio and the way it looks uh whenever you ask a question and i answer it if you ask another question in that same comment for some reason i am not getting notifications i don't know why but i'm not so i recommend you guys if you have additional questions ask them separate as a separate comment don't don't respond to my um answer just put it as a as a separate comment so i definitely get notification and i see it um also another thing i wanted to say because this youtube channel is growing more than i expected ever for it to grow uh looks like i will be becoming a youtube partner very soon probably in in couple of weeks or so i was planning to do a live videos live questions answers um so if you have any suggestions if you have any ideas or or questions or or topics that you would like to see me discuss and answer some questions definitely let me know as the suggestions and i will start saving them in advance um, to see so um, again hopefully i was able to be helpful and uh if i was you know make sure to let me know i you know that's the best part of having this channel because i see you you know guys being thankful and thanking me for giving you information and uh just feeling like i was able to help someone really makes me feel good so thank you very much guys for watching and uh i'll see you in the next video